Hello there, my name is Trevor from SkySiv. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new SkySiv Grasshopper plugin, some of its capabilities, as well as how to get started. You should be a little familiar with the Grasshopper landscape, since we aren't going to be going through any tutorials on how to use Grasshopper or Rhino in this video. So the SkySiv Grasshopper plugin is used to transform the geometry that you create uh, in the Grasshopper space into something that SkySiv uh, Structural 3D can read and manipulate. So let's take a look at the overall workflow and how the plugin works. On the right we have our platform. This is how it operates on the, on the browser. This is if you're a SkySiv user, what you're used to using. On the left we have our Grasshopper within Rhino. And this is where you use generative algorithms and parametric modeling to create uh, those geometries. And those are geometries that are rendered in Rhino. And then in the middle is our SkySiv and Grasshopper plugin. This is what bridges the gap between um, these two platforms. As I mentioned before, what its job is, its job is to transform the geometry that you've created uh, in Grasshopper into something that you can use and analyze as a SkySiv uh, structural 3D model. And it does that because you can, uh, in the plugin, you can define things like structural elements, so beams and plates, loads, supports, and then sections and materials. So basically everything you need to actually run a model, you can define uh, using the plugin. Let's take a look at the plugin in action. So let's examine how this tool works by looking into an example project that we have in Grasshopper. So obviously we on the, on the left we have Rhino 6 and on the right we have Grasshopper. Uh, the Rhino space is where the geometry is going to be rendered or shown and then the Grasshopper space is where we have our parametric slash algorithmic modeling parameters. So these parameters that are shown are just using uh, the Grasshopper tools. The geometry in this example file would more align itself to a building type structure, a uh, high rise with multiple floors, the spacing in each way or base spacing in each way. We can adjust the sliders to change any of these parameters such as floor height, number of floors, base spacing, number of bays, and that'll affect not only the geometry in Rhino, but the geometry in SkySiv as well. So with the plugin installed, we're gonna see a SkySiv tab in the Grasshopper space. And all of these buttons here are the SkySiv components that we're gonna be using to convert our Grasshopper algorithm to a working SkySiv file. So let's take a look at the SkySiv components. I'm going to zoom out and I'll zoom in on the SkySiv components. So here we have our Grasshopper components. Here we have our SkySiv components. Going from left to right, we have a bunch of input type components here. Uh, there's the assemble component. This is just used to assemble all of the uh, building parameters. We have line to beam and point to beam. These are used to create beams uh, within the SkySiv model. We have a plate component, which converts uh, plate elements in Grasshopper to plate elements in Skies of 3D, distributed loads, point loads, plate pressures, and a self-weight component. And then we have a variety of support conditions uh, such as fixed, rollers, springs, any of these type of components can be applied uh, to points. The majority of these components require inputs, uh, the only one being the self-weight uh, doesn't require an input. This one is just fed into the self-weight input of the assemble model. But the rest of these components require some type of input. So for example, here we have a line to beam component. There's two inputs on this one. There's the actual line geometry, and then there's the cross section um, information that we'll talk about here in a second. So those are all the input parameters and components. Uh, these two are the section components. So we have the uh, SkySiv Matthick family. This is used to identify a plate's thickness and material. And then the SkySiv cross section component, this is used to identify the cross section and material of beams. So that's what this uh, component is right here. So we have a section material uh, component that we have identified two sections for, and we've fed those outputs into these two line inputs. And then lastly, we have a SkySiv 3D model writer component. So this is what is located here. This will take all of our assembly that we put together using all of these different inputs and components and output a JSON file uh, that we can use. Each one of these components is generated by either clicking and dragging it onto the canvas. You can see we dragged a fixed support, dragged a material and thickness component, or they can be generated by double clicking the canvas and searching for that. So if we search line to beam, we can generate the components that way. Just like in Grasshopper components, you can right click and usually the action is, is shown. So for example, material and thickness, right click, select material thickness. Um, these other two components obviously require some inputs. So um, just like in Grasshopper, you would feed those inputs uh, and then be able to use those outputs 
uh, along the line. To learn more in-depth information about each individual SkySip component, its inputs and outputs, make sure to check out the software documentation link in the description. And at this point, our model is completely finished. Now, if we click on the Launch S3D button directly in the Grasshopper space, our model is then generated. Uh, at this point, we have expedited the modeling process that we would have to do manually in Structure 3D. We've generated our columns uh, that we can see our HSS 6x6 by 6x3. By so that's one of the sections we identified in the Grasshopper space. We've also identified our beams, identified our supports. We have those few loads that I applied within, uh, within the app itself. Uh, so the majority of the, the generation of the structure, its loads, its sections, materials, supports have all been uh, completed in that one step. And now when you have the model in this space, it can be saved, shared. Uh, it's treated as a normal S3D file or model. So you can manipulate it. Uh, maybe there's some complex things that you couldn't complete within Grasshopper that uh, now it can be a lot done a lot easier and quicker uh, than having to model this entire structure yourself. So once you have the model in here, make sure you take advantage of a lot of the easy modeling and application functions that we have offered in Structure 3D itself. So if you're currently a Grasshopper user that wants to give our free plugin a try, make sure to check out the download link in the description and as well as follow the download instructions provided. Uh, when the installation is complete, the SkySiv tab in Grasshopper should automatically show up the next time you restart it. And make sure to check out the software documentation link uh, for more in-depth information as well as some example files like the one shown available for download. And with that, that's gonna wrap up this quick overview of and getting started video of our SkySiv Grasshopper plugin. This video really only scrapes the surface of what is possible uh, when you're joining the parametric modeling powers of Grasshopper with the functionality offered in Structure 3D. Make sure to keep a lookout for future videos on the SkySiv Grasshopper plugin. If you really enjoyed this video and want to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook. To learn more about the Grasshopper plugin and its place on our platform, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing what you can create uh, using Grasshopper and SkySiv Structure 3D.